Escape to the world of your dreams with Windows Mixed Reality and hardware from Acer, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Samsung. You can escape the everyday into a world of imagination. Personalize your virtual home with great content and surround yourself with apps from 20,000 available titles. Pre-order your Windows Mixed Reality headsets now at firstlooks.tv slash Microsoft. All right, so our next interview is here. Hi. Hi, I'm the next one, huh? Yeah. yeah. Can you please introduce yourself for us? My name is Ken Johnson. I am director of First Tech Challenge. Okay. So what does that entail, being the director? Uh, what doesn't it entail? <laughs> okay, let's go there. Oh, let's go there. <laughs> um, so First Tech Challenge, uh, director of First Tech Challenge, uh, our responsibility, my team's responsibility is to uh, develop the program, everything from the game to the rules, um, develop the field, so developing partners that uh, execute the, um, the program, and that includes everything from outreach and events like this to uh, helping coaches succeed, uh, to finding funding to hold the events, uh, building volunteer communities, uh, and of course all under the umbrella of espousing you know, technology and all the great things you can do with it. So uh, we have a team, a uh, direct First Tech Challenge team of about 12 employees, uh, but we have over 6,000 teams uh, that we work with to make that all work together. Wow. So we depend a lot on our volunteers too. I don't, you might know the statistics, but uh, about 500,000 students go through FIRST programs annually, and that is facilitated by about 150 staff in Manchester, New Hampshire, but about 150,000 volunteers. Okay. So we really do depend on our great volunteers to make all the magic happen. Yeah, it is a volunteers everywhere, yeah. every yes. event, and it, they're great to talk to. I love talking to the volu other volunteers, too. I, I think, um, you know, when you see these events, your eyes are drawn to the students and their accomplishments, and it's amazing. That's what it's all about. But I think that as compelling a case could be made as to the wonderful volunteers that are involved, because these, not only is it 150,000 volunteers, I think we calculated Last year, it was about 13 million person hours that are put in wow. by the volunteers. And as you know, these volunteers <laughs> aren't just people looking for something to do. They're all extremely talented uh, and motivated folks. So uh, they uh, inspire, I think, the first staff as much as the kids do because we directly interact with those volunteers. And so. each volunteer has their own story about, about the events they go to, and it's, it's remarkable. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, we have some sponsors who uh, get involved with FIRST because they see the mission and the value of the mission, but it's also a way for them to get their employees directly involved in a ph philanthropic um, enterprise. And some of those companies have found that the process of volunteering with FIRST is great training for those volunteers because they bring those skills back into the, the workplace. And all the types of things that we teach the kids are being taught through those volunteers, mm -hmm. and they wow. can bring it back the other way as well. So the same type of environment where a, a, a really high-functioning first team works is uh, the same types of attributes that you'd love to have in your own company and those teams. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite things about the volunteer system is sometimes it comes full circle. A student on a team, then they graduate to a mentor, and then they, they volunteer. Like, we have volunteered through first as yeah. we graduated through FTC, and um, then one day we'll have kids and they'll come yep. right back. It's just a full circle. It's, yep, yep. <laughs> it's, it's like the mafia. You can never get out. You've gotta, <laughs> you're you're in for life. <laughs> That's what I say. It really is. You are always involved in the first. And I would like to know how you got involved in the first. Wow. So I got involved in first um, about 10 years ago. And I had not heard anything about first. First wasn't uh, around when I was in school. And I had spent up until that point about uh, 17 years in technology-based business development um, all over the place and uh, kind of got to that point where I really saw the value in technology driving the evolution of, of our world and wanted to be more directly involved in trying to widen that path for students that would come after me. So it was com first, my first nonprofit organization I ever worked for was FIRST. I volunteered Ooh. in a bunch of different ones, but my first uh, employment in a nonprofit was first, and it was 10 years ago now. Um, <laughs> it'll be 10 years in November, almost to the, uh, to the day. And uh, it really did satisfy almost every one of those desires to, to try to give back and to 
you know, to, to build the future. And this is the best way to do it. And if you guys know you've gone through it. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. So how are you enjoying Roboticon? I love it. Uh, so this is my <laughs> second Roboticon. Okay. Um, oh. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and the so second year in the Sun Dome, right? The second year in the Sun Dome. Yeah. And uh, so Terry Willingham uh, kind of got me plugged in. And I made the, the mistake once to mention that I actually went to school here at University of South Florida. Oh. Oh. Um, so she very uh, adroitly picked up on that and, uh, <laughs> and enlisted me in, in uh, doing everything that we could to, to help make it a success here. And, uh, and, uh, and the university has been great. I take no credit at all for the uh, support that the university has given. Um, but uh, I am really proud that, uh, that my alma mater is, uh, is a part of it. So, uh, and I do have an affinity to this area. I think mm -hmm. that um, there's a great deal of energy down here. There's a great deal of creativity. Um, and boy, you know, the, the area continues to grow. So it just supports uh, all those kind of underlying raw material that's there for, uh, for, for great things to happen. Yeah. And uh, what's your favorite thing at Roboticon? Like, what's, the, what's your favorite aspect of it? I like the fact that you can take a step back, you can be right about where we are here, and you can see all the programs in one spot. Exactly. So yes. we talk about, you know, K through 12 and inspiring those kids all the way through, and you can literally see it in one shot right yeah. here um, and probably more important they can see it in one shot because if there is you know there is no terminus until you get through 12th grade and then you can go on and do whatever you want but um, you know having the opportunity for especially the younger students to see what the kids that are a little bit older than them are doing um, you can see the lights go off in their eyes definitely go on in their uh, eyes I guess yeah, yeah they light it's, up I really like the passion that this this event brings everyone like yes. we all feel really passionate about robotics and first in general yeah and this is just a great it's a great experience I think you have everything here you have the from first Lego junior all the way to the first robotics competition the other competitions in between and then we're also at a college, so that shows like these are high schoolers, and they get to see like, oh, colleges do all this stuff, and there's a uh, University of South Florida engineering clubs here, mm -hmm. and I'm a student here, and a lot of the first alumni who study at USF also are volunteering here. They yeah. get to see what's next. So there's everything, and then we have companies here who are showing off uh, their technolo technological companies, and it's just. There's everything, and then the public gets to come in, and then you see all these people who are like, whoa, what's this? And yep. then these kids get to tell more people about what they're doing here. I love that. Yeah, that is Th this is, um, you know, everyone has their own story about how they got involved in FIRST, and every one of those stories begins with an awareness, right? You have to know it exists before you get involved, and uh, Roboticon does that better than almost any event that oh, I can yeah. think of. And uh, we really, from a, a headquarters perspective, would love to see more and more of these types of events happen because, you know, at the end of the day, our mission is to inspire the next generation of technology leaders. And the only way we do that is to get more and more people involved. Um, so the fact that, uh, you know, the average person uh, might not know of FIRST uh, is a shame. So these events do a lot to help that. And you can see with things like you're doing right here, um, uh, the press that is here, uh, the other press that is here, uh, there's that that pool is expanding and expanding, so it's it's really heartening to see. Um, and and we look at uh, you know I'm not sure when you joined first, but uh, if it's you know more than three or four or five years ago, it's not quite double in size since then, but it's it's quite a bit bigger. Yeah. So and um, and that's what we aspire to do here with first looks. Yeah. Like that's that's why we created the show. That's your mission too, oh, right? Yeah, mission. Get more it is. We want. People to bring to awareness, yeah, because yeah. this is it, it, it's it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, even if and that's what we were talking about before you came on air. We were talking about how it's a fun thing to do, even if you're not even interested in robotics or right. in engineering. There's so many different aspects to just first. More than just robots, right? More, it is than, more than, robots. than just robots. More than just robots. The gracious Tag professionalism. Line. That's right. That's yeah. right. And and so it's funny too because we we talk a lot about this at first and and it when people start to bring up the topic of, you know, hey, you want to be an engineer, you want to be a scientist. Um, that brings with it a lot of perceptions, right? Some people automatically think of the wonderful things that scientists and engineers can do, but a lot of people, especially younger people, automatically think of, boy, there's a lot of tough math classes in that path, um, <laughs> or there's a lot of, you know, dry subjects that I might not immediately resonate with, but being able to kind of flip that script around 
and give the kids a compelling challenge with technology that's relevant and the support around them through mentors and, and training uh, to get them there, it really does flip that equation around from saying, hey, here's some really important math topics you should learn to, hey, here's a challenge, here's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. And the human mind is, is normally a problem solver, right? Mm -hmm. So you get this challenge and you get this kit of parts and you get these technologies and you automatically start thinking, you know, like solving a puzzle, how would I do this? And then you can see what other people are doing and you get inspiration from that. Um, and then next thing you know, the learning is a byproduct of it. And I don't need to tell you guys yeah, this. You it's, all, you've it's been through it. It's the hands-on experience yeah. that happens before you get into the yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so there's the, the, the other side of that equation, right, is the, um, is the sponsor side. So the sponsors being able to see all this happen. And just as you mentioned, as more and more alumni are out there, uh, more and more companies are going to have experience with alumni and say, holy smokes, that's what we're looking for. So we've seen that in the uh, colleges already. And uh, this year we have over $50 million available in scholarships to FIRST alumni wow. from over 200 different uh, institutions. So wow. it's a pretty wide breadth of, uh, of college or university that the students have to pick from that are offering FIRST scholarships. And, and that again is because the FIRST students don't just exhibit an aptitude towards technology, but all those incredibly important skills of teamwork, uh, gracious professionalism, um, yeah. all those things, because technology is going to change, it always does, but those abilities to understand and assimilate technology and do it in a team environment, mm -hmm. um, those are the critical skills. And it also brings like an opportunity for people who are for students who can't go to college or for students who want to learn more about engineering and they, they don't have the opportunity to. Right, right. I, I can't tell you how many sponsors that I have talked to at events like this where they see the kids compete and they say, I would hire that student right now. And we say, hey, well, they might want to go to college <laughs> first. But, um, but they're, they're true. Um, and there's a lot of great internships that, that spring out of that. Um, and all of it is in that, um, that pathway to really show them what the possibilities are. Because, you know, with young people have a, a, a narrow, narrow field of vision in terms of experience because they're young. So um, all of that ties together to, to really give kids opportunities that they otherwise might not thought possible. Yeah, it is amazing what FIRST can do for the younger generation. And I've had people on my team, and instead of going to college or getting a job straight away, they went to the Vista Corp. Oh, great. And they actually have a, a partnership with FIRST volunteering yep. to where he graduated high school, but he decided he was going to do the Vista Corps, and he's a, now a Vista volunteer for FIRST Robotics. Oh, wow. And that's so tremendous. he's coming back, and that's what he's doing with his life right now. And he's saving up money through the Corps to go to college. That's tremendous. But you, it's, there's so many different ways. Yeah. It's, so the, it's the Vista program in FIRST, I think, is just a few years old. Um, so three or four years ago, we didn't have any involvement, but that's been a tremendous program from, from yeah. both perspectives. It's a great benefit to FIRST in terms of spreading the word and, and making resources available in the field, but it's also a great opportunity for the people that go through the VISTA program, um, especially ones that are interested in science and technology, and even more so ones that have been involved in FIRST, because they're, as you know, the best ambassadors <laughs> of FIRST are the students that have gone through it and the coaches that have, uh, have volunteered for it. Yeah. yeah. The best advertisement we can have. <laughs> it, it's actually the reason why this entire program is done by alumni and family of alumni. Yes. I. Um, you know, I, I, I had the conversation just earlier today. If you uh, put out an unstructured problem of how do you get 150,000 super talented people <laughs> to come together and donate 13 million plus person hours per year, like how would you do that? Um, I don't know, create a religion <laughs> or something like that. Um, and that's certainly not what a we set out to do. religion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so I, I think that the... The, the makeup, as we talked about before, of the volunteers, mm -hmm. um, it is definitely a, an affinity group. There are people that really share the same vision and passion. Um, and, and I think all uh, definitely realize that they're helping create the future. Yeah. I have a question that traces back to not this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing that your position comes with a lot of secrets when it comes to, like, 
<laughs> working on the on the game and 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 the. Are you the asking about the new game? <laughs> no, I'm not asking about the new game. It's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. I'm just yeah. asking how you how you deal with the secrets. <laughs> um, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> So the safest thing is to always say nothing, but I don't have the type of job where I can do that, or the personality, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. um, we, um, the, the first community is uh, incredibly respectful, first off, and they realize that, you know, of course they would all love to know what we've got planned for next year. Um, and we do have, like I said, it's an 18 month game design cycle, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned earlier. So we are, uh, you know, six, seven months into the game that will be released next September. But uh, although everyone would love to know what that game is, they also have the rationale yeah. to know that I can't just tell you. Yeah, yeah. obviously or you. can't just, especially on air. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I was going to say the live camera probably uh, really limits that capability. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'll I'm not asking later. what the no. game is. I'm no, just asking the, the scenario How? around it. Right, right. Yeah. So, so um, we do sign an incredible number of non-disclosure agreements because just like <laughs> we run on uh, the backs of volunteers, that doesn't stop with events like this, but game design is largely volunteer driven, but we have a very small core group of folks that uh, are really good at keeping uh, secrets, but we also reach out to um, industry to understand kind of what is new and different and coming down the pipeline. And we try to occupy that space that is not, um, you know, bleeding edge technology because there's a lot of gutches in that um, but close to leading edge, um, because we really want the students uh, and, the, and the mentors and other folks that are involved to be able to uh, get their hands on really relevant technology. So for instance, in First Tech Challenge, the Android operating system really allows us to um, create you know, about 60,000 potential mobile app developers, because that's what they're actually doing when they program their robot, that they're, they're programming a mobile application that gets used on an Android device. So, we do have to um, stay connected with a lot of different folks uh, to stay relevant and to make sure that we're paying attention to the important things, uh, while at the same time keeping it quiet enough so that we're not tipping our hand. And it goes to more than just the game design. Uh, the technology choices that we make, uh, there's really quite a few facets on it. Uh, so part of it is relevancy, uh, part of it is cost, um, part of it is uh, adequate training um, that's out there, because uh, if we're the only ones creating the training, uh, that can be uh, problematic as well. Uh, it includes commercial partners that can actually provide the technology mm -hmm. and do it in a way that is a bit unique. You know, our, we don't have a normal demand curve, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, when we announce the game, uh, there's a huge spike in registrations and interest, and, and that pulls a lot of that technology and product through. So there's a lot of things to juggle to make sure that we've got all those right. And we don't always get it right, but um, we, we try our best. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's a lot of lot of uh, responsibilities <laughs> on your shoulders. I, uh, I, I have I have an incredible team. I think that um, in my career, I can't think of a better group of folks that I have ever worked with. And I think that one of the reasons for that is that first just attracts, whether it be volunteers or uh, employees, just some really wonderful people. And, um, and having a mission as we do uh, really makes it easy to get up in the morning and, and do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you, you know, as you mentioned from the energy that we see here, uh, this is the best part of the year for, for the first staff <laughs> because you know, between championship, which uh, we finish and we're all exhausted and half the people come back and they got a cold or whatever, um, <laughs> and now it's, it's really kind of, you know, putting the hay in the barn and men in the fences and getting ready for the next year. Um, but that disconnects us a little bit from all the great energy that we see here. So once we get that uh, fall thing going, uh, you know, everyone's batteries get recharged, even though we're, we're traveling more and running a little bit faster <laughs> on the hamster wheel. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you so much. This has been oh, great. Thank so you. So if someone wanted to find out more about FIRST or wanted to get their their hands dirty in the, in the <laughs> field, what, where can they go and what can they do? The best place they can go is our website. And as you probably have announced, it's www.firstinspires.org. Uh, that's where you can find all the information. You can look by program. You can look by area. Uh, one of the best things I would suggest for folks that are interested in getting more involved in FIRST is to go onto the website, find out what's happening in their area, and then reach out to the partners in that area. So mm -hmm. if you're in the Tampa area, the best place to connect would be for the folks that are here. 
Um, but from an overall perspective, uh, certainly things like scholarships, uh, grant opportunities, uh, other things like that, the FIRST website's a great place to start. And we have a, an extensive library on how to get started, uh, how to raise funds, um, how to program, all those different things there. Almost uh, can be a little bit intimidating with all the information <laughs> we've got there, but that's the place to go. Okay. Well, well thank you so much for coming yeah. and joining us. And thank you so much for coming to Roboticon. It's great I seeing you it. here. I love it. I love it. All right. Thank, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you.